I was called by the territory. We create an ecosystem that will last for hundreds of years. And when you maintain this ecosystem, you definitely see a different dynamic. We invest in the weather of the future. Almost 100% of the elements we use on our menus come from our edible forest. We're here in the southern coast of Ecuador, in the Manabí province. It is not just any land. This is 12,000 years of human history here. Very successful human history. The Valdivia culture is the oldest culture of the Americas. It's the, the first culture that did agriculture, pottery, and navigation of all the American continents. When I was in France, I had the chance to be cooking with some of the best chefs in the world. I worked in three Michelin star restaurants, two Michelin star restaurants, and this allowed me to really understand the technique and the organization and the managing of a restaurant. But when I came to Ecuador, I realized that the learning was something else. And really, when I came here 10 years ago to this area and I started cooking with the local people, understanding the product, lighting the fire, understanding biodiversity and being so amazed by the culture, by the heritage of this place, I was feeling that I was learning more than any three Michelin star in the world. When I had the opportunity to participate in this Netflix competition called The Final Table, I had the chance to promote the same values that we're putting in practice today uh, for the benefit of, of the whole. It was a, a strict culinary competition, but in a way, gastronomy is a vehicle to convey a message, and, and we definitely put that on the table. We set up the level of commitment, of impact, of what we're causing through the creativity we're applying to, to the different dishes we, we created. So now we're seeing the continuation, how we walk the talk on what I was promoting on Netflix, I, I am actually doing here. We intend to create a bio-corridor, but we look forward to bring connectivity to these different ecosystems. By connecting these ecosystems, we bring a great opportunity to maintain this place as a climate-resilient place, as the biggest edible forest in the world. The biggest biodiverse edible forest in the world consists in uh, reconnecting ecosystems and cultures is a west to east bio network that brings an amazing connection to different ecosystems such as coral reefs, mangrove forests, uh, dry forests, tropical dry forests, and then humid garua forests. All these variety of ecosystems are reachable in a very quick bike ride, and this makes this place one of the most biodiverse places in the world. We are uh, already managing over 100 hectares of biodiverse edible forest. That's equal to 200 acres, approximately. This is a unique forest because it's the transition uh, between the coast, the, uh, the mangrove, and then the, the tropical dry forest. It is uh, a place full of animals. This is verdolaga, which is the species of plant that has the highest amount of omega-3. This is a wild plant called uh, frutillo. Part of its own cycle of life, at some point it brings this red fruit, which is edible, and sometimes we collect it. This is one of the first interventions we did into a degraded ecosystem that was originally a, a pepper farm and it was absolutely flat and empty of vegetation. And now you can see a great biodiversity. There is a, a big amount, I would say at least 200 species at the moment. As humans, we can redesign an ecosystem adapted to today's needs. And this is what we have done here. We have left a place better than we have found it. It's amazing to see how wildlife starts interacting with this actions that we take. So our actions are very important into bringing biodiversity back to the world. This is essential for us to contain climate change, to bring back biodiversity, and this is exactly what we're doing here. And the neighbor is a guayaba, right? 
and the neighbor is a monster leaf and the papaya and the chonta and the mamey colorado and the liguito, a cacao tree, aloe vera, pitahayas, the five types of banana and many more. Some of the species like the cacao or the avocado, they take seven years at least to, to give you a fruit. So I had to wait <laughs> for seven years to plant the cacao and then to obtain a fruit and then to start using it. So all that time is wisdom, is experience. El Abrazo is also part of the biggest diversity of forest in the world. It's a completely different ecosystem that has a great amount of, of humidity and that brings a different type of vegetation. And uh, the animals that we see, they're really beautiful and unique, make this place uh, one of my favorites and this is why it's called El Abrazo, which means the hug. You can definitely see it from the air where a healthy ecosystem is reaching the coast. And this is how the economy moves within an edible forest. We obtain it from the resources, we add value, we create tourism, biotourism, we create experiences, materials, and then added value products to be sold in different places. With this economy, we don't need to become predators for any of the ecosystems because we're thinking of the neighbors, neighboring animals, neighboring plants, and we all live in harmony here. And the, the food is there for everyone. This project of creating edible forests, highly biodiverse edible forests, can be replicated in different parts of the world. There is no way of achieving conservation without bringing a good quality of life for the community. And this is why bioeconomy is necessary as part of the edible forest. Because without uh, economic health, there's no environmental health in today's world. Cada paso que el señor Rodrigo hace, piensa en la naturaleza. Rodrigo es mi héroe en, en el sentido de que me gusta su forma de, de, de pensar de, de la naturaleza. Sabe muchísimo de plantas, de fruta. Y eso me llena a mí como de curiosidad en saber, este, en investigar. Their spirit has changed, their confidence, their self uh, acceptance have, have changed. And they are now proud of, the, of their culture rather than being ashamed. Boca Valdivia restaurant is a, a millenary autosustainable kitchen counter that is here to interpret the message of nature and to use all the resources, not only food, but materials and wisdom and beauty from nature, to transform them into culinary creations, into a creativity adapted to today's needs, and then it's gonna be brought to the table to connect people with nature and to bring a, a lot of information that is related to the art of sustainability, of using biodiversity and the vegetation in a wise and intelligent way. In Boca Valdivia, we're fully auto-sustainable and almost 100% of the elements we use on our menus come from our edible forest. My signature dish is biodiversity. It's just too much out there to have one dish. People are coming from all over the world, from over 80 countries in the world, to support this vision, to support this team, and this philosophy is just a great way for, for us to, to continue. My message to the world is that through whatever activity we do, we are able to take important decisions in order to contain climate change and create a better world for the present and for the future generation. I see the future with many animals and many trees and many fruits and food and water. That's how we see it.